Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and Killer Sudoku today. Um, I think it was Emily Williams said recently that she loves the puzzles where it's a really simple traditional rule set, but there's tons of difficult logic. And what I hear about this is it's somewhere between hard and very hard. Okay, well, I mean, I'm prepared to take those on some of the time. So today is one of those times. Um, we will have a look at Pietato's Polar Attraction in a moment. Uh, first of all, I do want to mention the Jewels of Osiris, the Sudoku Hunt by Mono, currently available, and until the 20th, uh, you can enter that on Patreon. Um, we'll be doing a scroll of honour at the end rather than individual shout-outs for people who finish the hunt. So don't be tuning in to listen for your name. It'll more be tune in to uh, see your name appear at some point if you finish it. Um, and it is really good, so do give it a go. It's just getting a lot of attention and attraction, and uh, no surprise there. Um, we also, of course, have loads of apps, including a killer Sudoku app, so check out our apps on the link under the video, um, and you will get loads of handcrafted puzzles from those for a very reasonable sum indeed. Um, and they are much, much better than machine-created puzzles. You can do 50 killer Sudokus in the Times or on daily killer Sudoku, and they're unlikely to be as interesting as one of the puzzles on our, um, on our app, or indeed today's puzzle by Pietato, who's a brilliant constructor. And uh, there's probably something very special going to be going on today. Um, I don't know, I'll find out about that in a minute. But there's also our merchandise and our apps, Sven Sudoku Pad. I mentioned the apps twice there. Um, and check it all out. But first, we are going to look at this puzzle. Now, the rules are very straightforward. Normal Sudoku rules, one to nine in every row, column, or box. Digits cannot repeat in a cage, and sum to the number shown if it's given. So those four cells have no repeats and sum to 16. These ones have no repeats. That's all we know. Give it a try on the link under the video. I am going to start now, see how I get on. Let's get cracking. And, well, we get a couple of nice cages, 24 in three cells. The only way to do that to keep the digits different is 987. The only way to do six is one, two, three. I think we have some extraordinary symmetry about this axis. Yes, if you add up the numbers of these cages that reflect in the axis, they add up to 30. These ones 20, these ones 40, and these ones 20. Now, not only are those numbers that they add up to divisible by 10 each time, they are also the numbers required to make the cages average five per cell. What am I talking about? 12 and eight in these two is 20. There are four cells. 20 divided by four gives five, the average Sudoku number as the average of those cells. Now, I think there is something going on in terms of high versus low, high versus low, low versus high, high versus low. But none of these are extremely high and low apart from these ones that I've done. So. I don't know, I'm going to have to think of something now. Oh, bother. I was hoping that these cages were nine cells big. Because then you could tell, then there'd be a set of the digits one to nine. Not only would we know their total, which I don't currently know because they're only eight cells big, but digits would have to appear in them. So, for instance, where are the digits in this seven? in this cage. I mean, it's if that was a nine cell cage, this is quite an interesting question, and it might still be interesting. So what I'm going to allege is that the digits in that seven, let's just color them purple for a moment. I'll probably give up on this, but they can't be in this box and they can't be in that cell. So to the extent that they appear in this eight cell cage, they're here, and that might be both of them or it might be one of them, and the other one is somewhere else in this, not there, in this box. Same's true of these digits in the 13. Oh, can I do maths on... Right, there is a secret which we occasionally share with you. 
um, that each row, column and box in a Sudoku add up to the same total. And that's because they all contain 1 to 9 and therefore they always add up to 45. Now, if I deduct that total of 37 from 45, then I get the difference of 8, which is also the difference between those five cells and those two. Maybe it's easier up here. 23. Hmm. Oh, there's a 9 looking at this 12k. So that's either 4, 8 or 5, 7. The 9 looking at that 8 cage is not so helpful. There are still three combinations of digits for that. I don't know what to do. Um, I can also see that those 1, 2 and 3 all see these cells. So they can't, neither 1, 2 nor 3 can appear in those cells. I don't know if that's, doesn't look all that helpful, but it's some, I'm just letting you know what I can see, what I'm thinking about, what I'm working on. And it's not much yet, is it? How do we... I mean, there are three combos of digits that go in this seven. There are three... Um, are they restricted? Can we not have five eight there because of this box? No, that is not true. Um, ah. Ah, okay, this is quite a big 24 cage, and these two cannot add up to more than 14. Now, why do I say that? Because if they added up... No, that's not true. Okay, hang on. Oh, it's very different. No, it's not. It's slightly different. They can't add up to more than 14, because if they... Oh, they can still... I'm sorry. It is very different. They can't add up to more than 15, because if they added up to 16 or 17, the digits would be taken from 9, 8 and 7, both of them. And you could only use three such digits in those four cells, and you couldn't fill the other one. So, so they add up to 15 or less. OK, let's assume they add up to 15, which you could do by having a 9 here and a 6 here. Then these add up to 9. That is the maximum that those can add up to. So the maximum for these four cells is 22. So the minimum for these is 23, because we've taken 22 from 45. The minimum for those is 23. So the maximum for these to get to the maximum total of 44 for an eight cell cage is 21, which is much higher than I was interested in. You could even make these the minimum of 13 to get to a total of 36. That just didn't do anything at all. Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, that would have worked equally well here. These can't both be from 1, 2, 3. So the minimum they can be is 1 and 4 equals 5, 11, 18, the maximum for these five cells is 27. And these can be, even if that maximum was reached, well, I mean, it gives a minimum of nine for these cells, which just doesn't feel very interesting. Maybe in this 16 cage, you can only put one high digit, one, nine, eight, or seven. And if it's a 9, it would have to be here. That would be a 1, 2, 4 set. I don't know. Let's go back. I mean, I should really think about set theory, but I don't know any sets to apply it to. I mean, the, if, these, if these cages were 9 cells big, that would give me more of an idea that we might be looking at set theory. I don't, I can't see anything. I 
Don't think these given digits are doing much. Maybe the nine is doing a little. Oh, it's the other way round. Why am I so slow? Right, this is, this is huge. I may know what this is. And that is because I've suddenly realized it's not about looking at those two digits and where they go in this funky cage. It's about looking at these two digits and where they go in box three. Right, let's make them purple. You see, look at it the other way around. It's a totally different picture. They can't go in this cage because they're already in it. They can't go in those cells because of Sudoku. So they go in these cells. Therefore, they're a pair adding up to seven, the same pair that appear here. And the same pair appear up in the top corner because we know they don't appear there. They've got to obviously be in, in box one in row one. And they don't appear there because you can't put seven, eight or nine into a seven sum of two digits. So those appear there. And the same situation's happening with these cells, which are going to be going into the 13 cage in box seven. And into, yes, one, two and three do not allow of themselves to join a 13 cage. So they're overlapping here. So these two cells that add up to 13 share an overlapping digit with these two that add up to seven. And I was hoping there was only one of those, but there isn't. There are, th oh, there are three of them. Well, this is four, five or six in the corner. Maybe the whole puzzle is going to come down to low digits, middly digits and high digits. And this one joins with four, five, six to add up to seven. This one joins with four, five, six. This is increasing my belief. Look, we can actually work out that that digit, where is that in the 24 box, in the 24 cage? It's obviously in there, but that one sees those two by Sudoku rules. So it's there. Okay, so let's get rid of the, slightly reluctantly, let's get rid of the coloring so far. Let's color this, this digit. That cell is here. You see, that would be quite interesting. That was nearly forced into this 16 cage as its only high digit, and that would be useful. It's also in these cells and in here. No, what am I talking about? It is this one. It's this one, this low one that is here in the six cage. Oh, and in one of these in the 24. I suppose the 24 acts as a high number in the same way as 16 does as quite a low one. You must be only able to put one low digit from one, two, three in there. Now, these three cells, given that, well, those two and blue now effectively see all of those, so they can't contain a low digit. Again, I could wish these cages were nine cells big. I mean, I feel like I've done something and it hasn't really achieved a lot. I probably need to find other cells. Right, this one, for instance, is part of the 16 cage. That one can't be in those by killer logic and in that by Sudoku. So that one, let's make it bright green for the moment, is in one of those two cells R. And therefore it's one of these three. It's that one, isn't it? Because these two are the ones that were there, that we had them purple originally. Yes. This digit is there. It is a big one. It is seven, eight or nine. There is a big digit in this cage. It's the green digit. And that means orange does not go in this cage because you can't put two big ones in the cage because seven and eight is 15. That would only leave one for two more cells. So orange is there, right? And I can symmet symmetricalize this, which is not a word, symmetrate it. No, I'm joking. Um, I can use symmetry to place, now what, this digit, that digit in this box, can't be in there, it's in one of those two. And now in column one, it's one of these three, but it's not those two, which are those two, which are those two. 
So it's that one is red. It is one, two, or three. It is the only low digit in a 24 cage. Let's just confirm you couldn't put two low digits in. Even if they were two and three, you'd need 19 in the other two. So there is only one low digit in this cage. Now, maybe more importantly, there's only one high digit in this one. I say more importantly, because we do have a nine looking at a couple of cells there. Now let's give that a colour. So orange, yellow and green are, are the big digits, 7, 8, 9. And that one must appear up here somewhere because it can't also be in the 16 cage and then it's here in one of those two. This purple digit, 1, 2, 3, is in one of these two cells similarly. Uh, yes, it is. And one of those three. They obviously don't overlap there. Symmetry leads me to suspect that yellow 7, 8 or 9 will be there and purple 1, 2, 3 will be there. But that's, that's not a valid conclusion and I'm not making it. And it might also not be true because Pietato might be a bit too clever for me. Um, now, what else have we got? We've got, we've got a high digit in here. So, if it was 9, it would have to, maybe we can rule out 9. If it was 9, it would be there. This would be a 1, 2, 4 set. I don't see that that's doing much else. I mean... This becomes 3, 5, or 6, and that's easy to fulfill. Okay, come on. What's going on up here? So one of these is purple and low. One of these is yellow and high. So this must be another middly digit, because it can't be any of the highs or any of the lows. in row two. That is going to have a middly digit and a low digit because that's how seven is made up. I don't know what that proves. Oh, there's a blue one here. I hadn't marked that off, but it's analogous to the orange one here. I should have done that. It's not really going to do anything. So, okay, all three low digits are in this cage. What about, wouldn't it be great to rule out one of the high digits? So here we have one high digit. If it's in the cage, no, we worked out those two are the same as these two, and they're one high and one middly. And these are a high, well, a low, the red is a low. Does the next one have to be high? No, there can be a middle digit too. I think there have to be two high digits in this. Otherwise, the maximum would be 9, 6, 5, 3, which is only 23. So there are definitely two highs in here. Ah, they can't both be in these cells because of what we saw earlier. We can't have a quadruple of three digits. So the two highs must include one in these cells with the low. Well, that's quite interesting. Now I am thinking seriously. I do want to keep these exact position things, but if red, blue, and purple are... Okay, this high is not green here. It is orange or yellow. But there is a high there. This is a high and a medium. It's the high is the green digit because it's not yellow or orange. Okay, I'm making further deductions here. There's one high here. There's one high here. So there's one high in this cage. By, because of the box rather than because of the cage. There's one high exactly in that section, 
and there's one high in that section, and therefore there is a high missing from... Right, it's not green. Green is in this cage because... Anyway, I've worked out, I think, that there's a high missing from this cage because one of the yellow or orange highs is here. There is a high in this one. That's two highs in the box. The third high digit from 789 is in the rest of the box. So one of those is a high digit, exactly one. Now we know that both of these aren't high because they are the same pair as are in the 13 cage. And you can't have them both be high. So there are only two high digits in that cage. I think the analogy must be true here. These must only have two low digits because we know there's... Didn't we know there was a low one? No, we, did, we haven't worked that out yet, but we can work out that there's a low one here. And I'll do that in a moment, but let's do these highs first. Oh, that can't be a nine, that's worth noting. Right, so, right, I was now gonna say that the digit that's missing is not green because Green is not in that pair, so it's not in the 13 cage. So in box seven, it's somewhere here. So green is in this cage. So that's not the missing high digit. Now, there is a missing high digit, which is orange or yellow, and the other of orange or yellow is in that pair. Oh. Oh, that's... I thought I was going to prove that's not yellow, but in fact all I'm proving is that one of those is a high digit in orange or yellow. Well, it's not that one. It's one of those two. Oh, I thought I was getting somewhere there. Um... Okay, let's do it for the, for the low digits up here as well. So we know that this cage contains seven, eight, or nine. The other digits in it must have two low digits because if you didn't have two low digits, the least you could have is one, four, five, seven, which adds up to 17, phew, yes. So there are two low digits in here. They can't both be here because you'd have three low digits to spread across four cells there. So, there is a red in one of those, oh, sorry, in one of the two on the right here. Sorry, I have messed up there. There is a red in one of these two because it's the other low digit. One of blue or purple is in these cells. And the other of blue or purple, I think we've worked out, is not in this cage. Not sure I could claim I've worked it out, but I think the analogy with the other side is going to prove that. Um, anyway, there is a low digit here. There is a low digit here, which is also in those cells and those cells. Oh, so the low digit there is blue. Yes, I could have done that down here as well, and I will in a moment. Right, the low digit in those is blue because it appears in those two cells, and we've named it blue, so it's in those two cells as well, and it's there. And now these don't contain blue, the low digit they contain is purple, and that can't be purple, and we will copy that down here. The low digit in these is not orange, because orange is one of those two, and therefore one of these two and one of those two, it's the high digit in there, and it's not in here. And the, the high digit in here is yellow. So that is not yellow. So yellow is definitely here. Purple is definitely here. And we've got a diagonal stripe of four, five, six in box one. And again, I still haven't got a digit or, or really got close to one. I haven't got more than, I haven't got fewer than three possibilities in any cell, but I still think I've made some progress, which is a measure of this puzzle for you. Now, what are the colours telling me? So my lows, oh, I might know what this is, hang on. I've got 
highs of, no, let's do lows first of all. I've got blue, purple, and red. Pur in column three, purple, blue, and red. The highs are yellow, orange, and bright green. Yellow there, orange there, bright green there. This is neither of those, it is four, five, or six. It's a middly digit. That must apply here as well in row three. The lows are blue, purple, and red. The highs are yellow, orange, and green. That can't be either of them. It is four, five, or six. This is a pair of middly and low. Hmm. I'm going to have to start colouring the middlies as well in a moment, which is going to wreck my head. Um, right, there's a middly there and there's a middly here along with the low. No, along with the high, sorry, along with the high green 7, 8 or 9. Right, I'm going to colour this cell. Let's go grey. Well, I'm going grey already, that's fine. But uh, one of those is grey, one of those is grey. This this 13 pair is orange and grey now. But grey is also in a pair in these cells with blue. So I've chosen the darkest colour for the one I can colour the most in this puzzle, which is a bit dumb, but there we go. Right, if that's grey, this one is the same as that and that. We need more colours, we need more colours. Let's go bright blue, we haven't used that yet. Bright blue is one of the middly digits. And we've got one left, we've got ordinary green for that one. Is this really helping? I'm not sure it is. What two digits are missing in terms of colour from this column? Bright green and ordinary green. I don't know where they go. Maybe the six is going to come into play. Not yet, I don't think. Can I use these cages now? I don't know. I mean, it's like floundering out, picking at the edges of a whale carcass. I don't know what to do. Oh, green is there and in one of those. So it's in one of those two. That's quite interesting. Red is there and in one of those and it's not six. So it's in one of those two. Um... This bright blue can't be in any of those, but it could be six. So it could be in the middle. It's in one of those in box five. It's up here with these yellows. It's down here with these purples. There's a yellow in one of these two. And there's a something in one of these two. It's a... Where was yellow from? I don't know. Uh, red, is it? No, don't know that. What's the equivalent of yellow? It's this one, purple. There's a purple in one of those two, okay. I feel like I'm losing my mind a bit now. I haven't really done anything, have I? Maybe I need to think about the actual totals, not just high, low and middly, but what are the numbers adding up to? Yeah, isn't that there's a low digit in this pair? The red is a low. So what if that was... Red and purple are low. So what if they were... Three and two. Then the middly digit and the high digit would have to add up to 11. 
they would have to be four and seven, which is quite an extreme case. Unfortunately, there is a way of them doing it, but that would make bright green a seven. So if, if, so all I'm saying is if blue, dark blue was the one, you'd put two and three in here and you'd have to put them in with four and seven. Seven would be the high digit, uh, the, the green high digit. And you'd have two and three in purple and red. One would be here. One would be blue. This would be a one six pair everywhere. You'd have a six here. That would be a seven. Of course, whatever. Whenever these add up, to, well, these add up to 7 and these add up to 13, so there's a relationship between these digits. They're always 6 apart. Blue and orange are always 6 apart. Now, is there anywhere I can use that? And that is why, if blue is 1, orange is 7. If blue is 3, orange is 9. Is that going to clash with our 9 here at any point? I want something that does clash with it, because then I could rule it out. I'm looking at where 9s would be if blue was 3. Grey would be 4 under this reckoning. Can't see what that does. Ah, oh, I mean this. This is just to kill a Sudoku, and I use the word "just" as ironically as I possibly can. It's vicious. So in column four, seven, eight, and nine have been used up in those digits. These can only come from one, two, three, four, five, six. So where do orange and yellow go in this box, in those cells? Oh, but... Where do orange and yellow go in this row? The two high digits. Orange doesn't go in this box. That's interesting. Right. Orange doesn't go in this 16 box because there's already a high digit in it. We can't put a second. It doesn't go here by Sudoku. So orange actually goes in one of these two cells. I was not aware of that. And that must mean... What's the equivalent digit? Blue in column 4 must be in one of those two. Now, what about this then? This is not orange, yellow, blue, purple, or bright blue. It's also not red or green. <laughs> What's left after that? It's not any of the high digits. It's not any of the low digits. It's not any of the low digits in this row. It's not any of the high digits in this column. It's four, five, or six, and it's not six. It's four or five. It's not bright blue, so it is dark green or blue. Famous grey. Um, now these in this column, there's a high digit at the bottom and a middly one. These are a one, two, three set, are they now? Yes, we've had the only low digit there. They are. They're a one, two, three set. That's bizarre. Um, these must be a 7, 8, 9 set. They are, by the same token. Oh, OK. Um, so these are orange, green or yellow. That one is bright green or yellow. That one is any of those. Don't see why there's any it couldn't be. That one is not bright green, so it could be yellow. 
Well, that's an interesting triple anyway. I'm going to color these as well because it might help. I don't know. That's red or purple. That's blue or purple. And that is blue, red or purple. And now the trouble is that the bright green could be in either of those cells. And the red could be in either of those. There's possibly symmetry. We might be looking at another four, five, six triple, but it's not quite the same symmetry I've been looking at before if we are. So I don't use anything like that. Just got to keep thinking. I haven't really narrowed down. I mean, that's the first thing I've narrowed down a bit, isn't it? I've made that cell either four or five. So the six in the column is either bright blue or it's down here where we where we don't know its color. It is either dark green or gray, which appear there in column three. Now, can it be six? That's worth considering. Then the rest of this box adds up to 18. It's got two high digits in it. Seven, eight, three. There's lots of possible ways of doing that. That is very annoying. Wow. I mean, I don't know if you can actually hear the cogs of my brain spinning. It feels like it is very loud doing that. I know how ridiculous that sounds, but... I am trying here, I promise you. <laughs> Just not seeing how this polar attraction works. I can see why it's all about polarity. I mean, I did not expect to get, even as much as I mentioned, it could be about the polarity of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine at the beginning. I didn't expect to get a little run of them here. Now, if light blue wasn't six, ooh, six would appear in both of these pairs. Now, in one of them, that's going to be difficult. Which one? This one. This would have to be six, seven, two, one. So if, if bright blue wasn't six, there'd be a six in this and green would be seven. Bright green would be seven. I don't know what that does. Do I need to think about these eight cell boxes again or have I just done enough for those for now? No totals, so it doesn't really matter what that is. There's no purple in this one. No, I don't think there's anything else I can do with them. It must, oh, it must be coming. Oh, look, whichever of these is high is the third high in its column. Same is true here. Whichever of these is low is the third low in its row. So in the rest of these columns, there's only one high digit anywhere in these highlighted cells. I know this one isn't bright green, but it could still be high. It could be orange or yellow. Oh, I just don't know. Six in row four. Where is six in row four? I mean, I bet grey is the middly one here. I bet it's the five. Why, why wouldn't six work as grey? How about that? Be oh, I was going to say because that's not possibly grey, but that could be green. Right. If grey was six... Green would be four and bright blue would be five. If grey was six, orange would be seven, dark blue would be one. I 
I want to use it for something, but I do not know what for. Oh. One of these is a nine, and one of those is a nine, because in these columns... No, that's not necessarily true. Only in the column where this is high is that definitely true, that one of those is a nine. One, two, three... Dark green in this box is in one of those three. I kind of feel I ought to know something more about the polarity of these digits, but I haven't worked it out. Was it based on how many highs, lows and middles went in this box? But I think that's still variable in the top row here, so I, I don't think I can do that. This felt exciting, this 789 triple. Oh, Mark, and Pietato, you are leading me a merry dance. Um, I was going to say that can't be purple if that is, but it doesn't really help. I don't know that that's purple. Seven, eight, nine, come on. I may not need many more breakthroughs. I mean, I've, it's not. I don't feel like I've done any significant breakthroughs, but on the other hand, if I can find a digit, most of this grid, or much of it, could easily populate itself. No bifurcation now. Come on. These orange and grey are those digits, obviously. They are here. If that was grey... It would make 13 with that digit and 7 with that one. It's not teaching me anything, I'm afraid. Um, this is getting quite frustrating now. I've seen a lot about this puzzle and it just isn't enough. Can I rule red out of there? This red, blue, purple set. The trouble is, I just think I can see everything about it. There's nothing hidden. There's no, there's no secrets to plumb. I don't know how you resolve this. I don't understand what you can look at to find more progress. What's going on in the 24 cage then? We've got two highs, a middly which could well be six. Again, if blue isn't six, it's five or four. No, if blue isn't six, the, the middly one here is six. And then you make up the other 18 with... Eight, seven, three. 972 or 981. I don't know. I don't know, Pietato. Fistamafel ring? That's madness clutching at straws. I don't think I know enough about the outsides of the puzzle for those cells to be equivalent to these corners. No, not those corners. That would be more helpful, that corner. I don't think that does anything. How does this resolve uniquely? It just doesn't feel like it ought to, I have to say. Um, maybe I should think about the middly digit here, instead of the high one, the four or five, which, well, I don't know. I don't know what colour it is at all. Maybe I should think about nine being in... Well, there is a high digit in one of these two cells. It is the bright green one. 
I need to go back to that because there's not much else to think about. The middly digit in this cage is here in one of these cells. So it's not bright blue. So if 9 is the high digit in here, the bright blue is not 4. But I mean, that's basing things on an if statement that I have no real control over. I suspect at this point, if there is a next logical step that, that is seeable, it's probably very, very visible to a lot of people. And if there isn't, what do you do? Case test, bifurcate? I don't want to do that. I know most of you don't want me to do that as well. But how am I ever going to find the logical way through? Right, let's think about blue being, bright blue being six. Actually, I think that's quite likely, so maybe let's not. Let's think about it being four or five. Then six is the digit that's not there, which is green or gray. So that would go into these cages as well. The six would go into both of those cages. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. These have both got red and bright green in. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Red and bright green are a low and a high. Red and bright green are a low and a high, and they will leave, in this cage, they will leave a low purple and a middly. What do red and bright green add up to? Do I know? I bet it's 10. Right, if it's 10, green and middly add up to, or sorry, um, if it's 10, purple and middly here add up to six which is easily done there's lots of ways of doing that i had not thought about this there is an eight different oh there's ah, got it right let us make these okay think about this one i don't know whether it's green or gray but whatever it is the other of green or gray goes into these cages and is common to them as well. That is it. So then these cages have the common one of green or grey, red and bright green. And the difference between them is yellow here and purple here. And the difference between those is the difference between 24 and 16, the cage totals, which is 8. And therefore yellow is 9 and purple is 1. Bingo. One there, nine here. Therefore, these do not have seven or eight. We know where the nine goes here. It goes there. This is not nine, obviously. This is, well, purple is one, so it's not one. Purple is one. Purple is one. Fill in the purple one. Oh, I mean, I haven't got a lot of them, but I can take out one out of red and blue. I um, haven't got a lot of those either, but this is surely doing something. Well, I've got two numbers. I feel, I feel like I'm the king of the world, suddenly. Um, joking, but not hard. Now, yellow is nine. That's here. Yellow is nine. Yellow is nine. Yellow is nine. One of those is nine. That is not nine. Now, what can this be? I bet this has come down to a 5. If it was a 6, it can't make 7 with that. If it's a 4, it can't make 13 with that. It is 5. Grey is 5. So that's a 5-8 pair. Orange is 8. There we go. 
Orange is eight. Blue is two to make seven. That's a two five pair. That's a two five pair. This bright blue is not five. That green is not five, but I still don't know what that is. All I know is that its counterpart goes in here. Do I know what that counterpart is now in terms of numbers? I don't think I actually do. Oh, but hang on, I will do in a moment. Three and two. We know that red is three now. Uh, so red is down here with yellow. Red is three. In fact, I can colour those because of the nine in the corner. Twelve. So these two add up to twelve. And one of them is bright green, which has become seven. I'm on the track. I'm on the trail. I'm going to find my way home. That's not a three. Yes. Uh, my son is on his way home too. That's good. Right. We've got a seven in here. So we know that the other digit, let's just do the maths, is a five. And that means that this number is a four. Now, I don't know the colour, annoyingly, from up here. Or do I? Yes, five is grey. We do know that. Oh, that was such a step. Maybe it was very obvious. I'm sorry if you were yelling that at me for ages. For me, that was very exciting. Now, grey is in here. It's a five. No white. OK, so that is five and red, which is three. Now, I'm hoping this puzzle gets a lot easier here. Now, in this row, this is now one... Ooh, what happened there? One seven pair. Green and grey. Does this add up right? Yes, it does. 16. OK, good. That's what we need. 17825. These are a 3 and a 4. I mean, it makes a big difference when you get it down to a pair of numbers somehow. Even though I don't know which is which. Ah, that feels good. Now, these are from 134. These are from 947, I suppose. Come on, let's keep going. Now, sh this eight. Oh, look at that. It can't be three, five or one, seven. Isn't that gorgeous? Because if it was three, five, you couldn't fill that cell in column nine. If it was one, seven, you couldn't fill that. Eight is two, six. And that is going to do a lot more work unlocking these. Five, five. We get a three there. I could do all the colouring. I could actually just get rid of the colours now. I think I'm, I'm going to risk it. I think they've done their fabulous business. There, look at that empty grid. It looks weirdly empty now. Now, this cell can't be a six or a nine. So it is one or four. It forms part of a triple with that. Six and nine are a pair there. Nice. But there's a one seven pair, so that's four. That's three. That's four. They're not four. Here we go. We've reduced it to a few pairs. Now, nine, three. That's become a two. Nine, three, two, five, eight, one and six. I don't have the same stuff going on here, but I have a five X-wing. Five is used up in rows eight and nine there. So the five in row seven is here and this can't have any fives in. So it's a four, eight pair and I've got an eight to tell me which way round it goes. That gives me nine. I've done, done that triple big. Um, the eight looks across here and we get those done. Two in the bottom row now suddenly has to be there, which is a slightly weird thing to spot. Uh, in this column, that is one or seven. We can place eight, quite similar. That gives me five and eight in that cage. Why is this one, two, three not got unlocked like the other one? I don't know. But I still think we're just cruising home now. Eight in this box goes there. That looks like the last eight in the grid. Three goes there. Um, why is this not resolving everything? Two. That two is looking at that cell. That's looking at this. That does the triple. There we go. That's why I hadn't done it. This is now a three, seven, five set. I can place them all. That can't be seven. These are from four, six, nine. There's a one here. I don't know what to do with that. I've got a five looking up top. And a three looking right up to the top. Now I can do four, six. That fixes nine, one, seven, one, two, four, seven, 
Oh, suddenly I'm loving the puzzle that I was inwardly cursing at. Don't tell anybody. Um, one and seven now. One and nine here. We're going to finish this now. And with a basically a massive sigh of relief. There we go. And that is correct. <sighs> Under an hour. Pretty pleased with that. Yeah, that was somewhere between hard and very hard. And where it was between hard and very hard was very hard for me. I mean, very well done if you got that. If you saw, if you got all the stuff done with the polarity early on and then saw that there were three identical digits in those two cages, my hat is off to you. Maybe I should be clever enough to have looked at those pairs as I did at the start, worked out that they were all averaging five and they were all ending in zero as totals, but then looked at those two and gone, ah, but those two have a difference of eight. That's going to be crucial. Look, they're all odd digits as well in the end. Isn't that weird? I don't know. I'm Pia Tato is a genius. It's probably not weird. It's just weird to me. Fabulous puzzle. Thank you so much for watching us on the channel. Hope to see you again very soon. Bye for now.